Hello class, this is Mr. Offer. We will begin our last part of our World War II series. Uh, I know we've been inside working in the office, so I thought we would get a little bit of a change of uh, atmosphere and come outside. Uh, in this series, guys, what I want to kind of do is I want to open up kind of the biggest controversy of this war, and that was going to be the unleashing of the atomic bomb. So let me kind of back up. We talked about the war with Japan, and those were the first two series, but I really never told you uh, how that war went. As you guys remember, if you guys remember, we talked a whole lot about the fact that the Japanese, as we began to do this island hopping, we would go from island to island. Now, guys, when we got right within bombing range, we began to load up the B-17 bombers, and then we will, uh, there was a U.S. Air Commander named Curtis LeMay. He's kind of a cigar smoking, uh, 20th century William Tecumseh Sherman type guy. And under Curtis LeMay, they will use a new weapon that ha the U.S. militaries came up with, which is called napalm. Uh, they will load these planes up with napalm, they will fly over Tokyo, and they will drop napalm. Uh, now, napalm is a sticky type of gas. Uh, most of us associate napalm with the Vietnam War because that's when it will be used the most. But it was actually introduced into World War II. Guys, this will be called the fire bombings of Tokyo. Uh, you have to remember, Tokyo, there were people that lived in grass uh, and wooden huts. So uh, if you put gasoline into bamboo structures, it's going to burn. Uh, there were actually more people and more devastation during the fire bombings in Tokyo than there will be the use of the atomic weapons. Now, Curtis LeMay and the U.S. military, their intent was to try to soften up the Japanese and to get the Japanese to surrender. Now, at this point in the war, I like to point out, you kind of got two things going on, guys. You got the war in Europe and the war in Japan. Now, the war in Europe had came to a close. Uh, as Adolf Hitler was being trapped by the Red Army in his little bunker, Hitler commits suicide. Once Hitler commits suicide, guys, it's in May. Uh, a couple of things are going to happen. FDR will pass away in May uh, of 1945. Hitler will commit suicide within a couple of days. So both FDR and Hitler are both dead now. Once Hitler commits suicide, the Germans quickly surrendered. Uh, they were only in the war because he put them there. That left us solely with fighting the Japanese. Now, as we did the fire bombings, and I'll tell you, the fire bombings, uh, if we had lost that war, I think Curtis LeMay would have been tried for war crimes. Uh, that was some of the most brutalist uh, bombing ever in the history, and it was done by the U.S. Uh, and our intention was to get the Japanese to surrender. Guys, they just weren't going to surrender. The Japanese were in it to win it to the end, and we quickly realized that. Now, at this time, after FDR passes away, uh, our next president will be Harry Truman. Harry Truman is the vice president. He will step in. Uh, he will be the president that will see the war to its closure. Remember, FDR died before the war. I mean, when he dies in Warm Springs, Georgia, guys, the World War II is still going on. Uh, shortly after he dies, Adolf Hitler commits suicide. Then, during the course of the summer, uh, we will prepare to invade Japan. Now, one of the things I like to point out to my students, and this is a big controversy, uh, is should we have used the atomic bomb? Now, when we talk about Harry Truman, uh, and we will deal with, some, with Truman, uh, I get a lot of Truman papers, and I will tell you, my father's generation, the generation of World War II, uh, they loved Harry Truman. Uh, if my dad was in my class and he had to write a paper, he would write it on Harry Truman. A uh, couple of things. Number one, uh, Harry Truman was from Missouri. That's where my dad was from, remember? And number two is Harry Truman ended the war. Uh, and that generation believed that ending that war saved a lot of lives. Now, 
I'll tell you guys, is, we, is the U.S. prepared to invade? A couple of things. We were bringing Russia in. Uh, Russia will come through China into Korea. Uh, and we will actually, there will be a POW exchange in Korea. And it's kind of interesting because the Russians are on the northern part of Korea. We're coming through the south. And where we're exchanging those prisoners into Korea will eventually be what we call North and South Korea. So if you're ever curious how Korea got divided, it was actually as a result of the Second War. It was a dividing line between the Soviets and the Americans. So let's talk back about this invasion. Guys, the U.S. military had estimated that to invade the mainland of Japan, uh, there would be 1.7 million casualties on our end of it at least we had seen guys how how vicious the Japanese had fought on these little bitty islands these are little bitty islands some of these islands weren't no bigger than Carthage the city of Carthage and we had lost sometimes up to 30,000 guys we were going to have to go into the mainland of Japan and we were going to have to fight both the, the Japanese military and the civilian population. Uh, it was going to be brutal. We were gonna to have to have more soldiers. Guys, we didn't have enough people. We were gonna to have to pull all these guys from Europe that had survived fighting the Nazis. We were gonna then have to come to the US, have massive recruitment. We were gonna to have to bring the Soviets in, the British in, to prepare for probably what would be the worst battles the US ever fought. Now, the Manhattan Project, guys, was the development of the atomic bomb. And that had started under FDR's administration. And it's always interesting, I've always wondered, would have FDR have used the atomic bomb? We don't know, FDR died before the bomb ever was in use. Harry Truman used it, guys. Harry Truman was a veteran of the first war. Harry Truman was very much aware of what war was. Harry Truman was totally different than FDR. I will tell you that. We'll have a more of a lecture into Truman, but he was a different kind of guy. Uh, FDR was a New Yorker. He was wealthy. He was an upper aristocratic guy. Uh, Truman is just a little guy that's, he's from Missouri. He'd worked in a little hardware store. He didn't have a college degree. Truman is your basic little country guy. Probably would have been great in Carthage. Uh, and he had dealt with people like Joseph Stalin. And he had dealt with people like Adolf Hitler. And he had dealt with people like Tojo. Now, Tojo was the emperor over Japan at that time. And, well, he's not the emperor, but he's over the army. Uh, so we developed the atomic bomb. There was actually two bombs. You'll see that probably on this attendance. And you'll also see it. Uh, there you had, uh, the first one was the Enola Gay, which will drop a bomb. Now the Enola Gay, uh, it's kind of interesting guys, the Enola Gay will load up in a B-29. Uh, that is the step up for the B-17. They will fly in and they will release the most devastating weapon known to mankind. Now the Enola Gay, something I always like to point out, the Enola Gay was named after the pilot's mother. Uh, got him Tibbins. Uh, and he wanted, because his mother wanted him to be a pilot, his father wanted him to remain a civilian doctor that worked at a venereal clinic, and instead of working with VD patients, he decided he'd rather be a pilot. Uh, and so he names it after his mother, Anola. Uh, I always thought it was kind of interesting. He always, he always pointed out that Anola was also, if you spelled it backwards, it was alone which he said, when we fly off, we are alone. Now, I'll tell you guys, they really felt that, the, uh, that this bomb, probably when it went out, would probably evaporate the entire crew. These guys still went, uh, and they went off without a hitch, uh, and we waited, and the Japanese did not surrender. Now, something very interesting, and I always like to point this out about Harry Truman, was before they dropped the atomic bomb, they came to Harry Truman, and they asked Harry Truman, they said, uh, Mr. President, should we release information to the Japanese public, to the Japanese military, that we have a weapon that is so devastating that it's going to just completely destroy everything? Should we tell them? 
Now, the interesting thing is, guys, and a lot of this is not really known through history, we did drop flyers before we dropped the atomic bomb and tried to tell the Japanese that the Americans did have a weapon. Now, the Japanese military simply said it was propaganda and none of that was true, okay? But when they asked Truman, should they specifically tell the Japanese the time, the date, and the location of the atomic bomb? Truman's response, and I think this is very interesting, they said Truman looked at him, he took his glasses, he wore those little round glasses, he took his glasses off, he leaned across his desk and he said, boys, let me ask you something. When those Japanese hit Pearl Harbor, did they tell us before they were going to do it? They backed up and said, well, no, Mr. President, they didn't. He said, that's your answer. Truman was a different kind of guy. They waited for the Japanese to surrender. That did not happen. Then they will drop the second atomic bomb. Now, it's dropped in a car call, in a, in, excuse me, in a in a B-29 called the boxcar. Uh, that is on a test question that probably will be your attendance question also. The boxcar is a B-29 and everything that could have gone wrong almost did went wrong. Uh, in route to the location, the bomb triggered itself. It went to, it had a timer. And the thing about the atomic bomb, guys, is when it was dropped, you had to set a timer. It did not hit the ground and go off. It actually, the timer would detonate it and it would explode while it was miles above the ground. This thing actually triggered itself, almost went off on the airplane. Uh, the airplane almost run out of gas uh, coming back. Uh, so the boxcar will drop the second atomic bomb. Now, the interesting thing is we know the Japanese will surrender directly after that, but they almost didn't. The Japanese military, guys, the Emperor of Japan will make the decision to surrender, but the Japanese military will try to overthrow his government, overthrow the Emperor, because they truly believed they could fight the Americans off. So, you know, in, in all history, anything could happen, uh, but that will be the end, the, uh, the end of the Second War, the beginning of the atomic age, guys. The uh, United States will be the first country in the history to unleash not one but two atomic bombs. Uh, that decision has always been questioned whether or not we should have done it. Was Truman right in what he did? Uh, you know, and I always tell my students, you know, Truman based that decision off the fact that 1.7 million American military people were going to die in an invasion going into Japan. So you either can unleash this weapon or you can get 1.7 million Americans. And that's on the downside, guys. Probably would have been higher than that. Would have been killed in a massive battle to take Tokyo. Uh, and guys, that's just the Americans. The 1.7 is just us. I'm not throwing in there how many Russians would die, how many Brits would die. We're not throwing in there the civilian population of Japan. Uh, we're not throwing in there the Japanese army or the civilians that would die. Uh, those numbers would have been in the millions. Uh, now, by unleashing the weapon that we did, we also unleashed the atomic age. And when we get into session nine, we'll talk about the Cold War. We'll talk about Harry Truman dealing with the Korean conflict. But this will end World War II. Uh, this probably was a lot longer than I wanted it to, but I wanted to really explore the decision Harry Truman made to use the bomb. Uh, some of y'all may write Truman papers. Uh, Truman's popularity, I will tell you, at the time of the end of the war was very popular. Truman will serve one more term. Uh, his decisions in Korea will make him a little bit unpopular. And over time, Harry Truman, the little, the little country guy out of Missouri, will end up being uh, one of our more popular presidents. I get a lot of papers from Harry Truman, and we'll discuss Harry Truman a lot more. But he will be the president that will end the war that we're involved with. And this will end this lecture, too. So, with that said and gone, guys, we'll end it, and then we'll get ready for session nine. See you later.